in an earlier video I have uh, told already about the good properties of the field effect transistor, especially uh, its extremely high impedance at the gate. And that makes that an audio filter is not damped. Damping always uh, gives certain effects. Uh, it means that, for instance, the sharp audio peak of a filter is more or less pressed down to, say, uh, other figures. And that, mean, that means that we lose properties, the good properties of, say, an audio filter like this, made with capacitors and resistors. But also another uh, kind of tuned circuit that is connected to the field effector stage, effector field effect transistor stage. That's here. This is the field effect transistor stage, drain source gate, the bipolar transistor amplifier, also showed in an earlier video. And here is that audio filter that I want to demonstrate. I want to show the schematic first. You can see here the input potentiometer, three potentiometers that set um, the bandwidth of that filter. It's a parallel T filter, T filter, and uh, here is the schematic. I hope it's visible from this distance. The parallel T filter, T filter is here. In this uh, red circle we see the typical uh, parallel T filter with which you can set a certain bandwidth. And in this case in the audio band, 20 Hz up to 20 kHz. Voltage supply approximately 12 up to 18 volts. Here is that bipolar transistor stage of which you can set the bias here, the working point here. Here, here you set the amplification. I will demonstrate that. Here are the pin connections. And this is in a certain way a quite a complicated filter. Perhaps it looks that way but it isn't that at all anyway. Uh, you can also see the effects and hear the effects when you send in here an audio signal out of a CD player or a smartphone and only use here one capacitor directly to the gate of the, the field effect transistor, the BF245. So this is in fact a very very simple uh, audio filter that you can use and apply in this situation. A capacitor that bridges the signal line gives a high cut and a capacitor that is inserted in, into the signal line gives a low cut. So for instance when this is a 10 nanofarad capacitor you will not hear here at this output. Say this is an audio signal in, music signal, and this is a 10 nanofarad capacitor. You only will hear the high frequencies. And when you bridge it with say a 100 nanofarad capacitor, you will only hear the dull frequencies. Of course, in that case, this has to be bridged anyway. That's logical. So let's listen to the to this filter, the parallel T filter. I've made an uh, experimental setup, and I hope I may I will be able to show the effects. I hear a hum now, and that's one of the problems in this circuit 
it's not shielded so everywhere where you touch it there's hum okay that's that's one one issue but not in fact an important issue because when you shield it all here on the underside etc etc or you you mount this whole circuit in a metal box this hum will be gone but we have to live with it during this experiment anyway let's listen I turn one potential meter of the parallel T filter here. Here there is a certain strange bulb. You can see that on the scope. Anyway, let's uh, see what we can hear when we turn this potential, these two potentiometers, 500k, So one potentiometer uh, set to the left side and suddenly we hear a lot of uh, sound and the other one tuned to the right side and now we tune that potentiometer here also to the left side and we tune it to the left side and now we tune this potentiometer here the 10k potentiometer and we don't hear many differences so let's set it back to the middle position This is interesting to show. And here, perhaps. And here. Well. The sound is completely gone, we only hear a slight hum due to the imperfect earth connections. So I hope this was a little bit clear. I turn out the potentiometer at the input, we hear the typical earth hum. I give it more signal. And again, tune this. So, I hope this was a more or less convincing uh, demonstration of the parallel T filter. Uh, of course, you can use other capacitors, especially. Uh, uh, as output and input capacitor, it's important to tell that the, uh, the output signal is directly connected to the gate of the transistor. And now I have done that via a 0.22 microfarad capacitor, but you can also directly connect this filter to the gate of the NFET the BF245 uh, because its impedance is endless at the input 
anyway. So, bend over somewhat. Perhaps. Uh, and I hope it was a good demonstration. But feel free to do experiments. Especially by changing, for instance, these three capacitors. You will surely get to another uh, bandwidth somewhere in the audio band. And also when you um, change these two resistors or perhaps that one. Well, uh, my aim is always <coughs> to do experiments and uh, they give good results. And I've experimented a lot with this circuit in the past. And it works very properly. And here we of course set the bias of the following stage and the amplification of that stage. I uh, have not demonstrated that. But when the signal that goes through the filter weakens a lot, it can be uh, lifted up by this second stage. Uh, where you can set the amplification to its maximum. And that's, that's a lot. Say it is 100 times or 200 times. So you can lift up the properties of the filter that you made. Make them, make it more sharp, etc. More precise. Uh, with the help of this second stage that can amplify a lot.